be some more Mr. questions. Yeah, okay. Mr. I know you gave uh, Mr. Suresh a batting chance already, but I'm going to give him another chance. I know a lot of conversation is going on about DDO and not enough, therefore, on SOE restructuring. You said at the beginning that there are some things that must remain with government, and a couple of months ago you spoke at the Colombo Club, and you said there was no correct number on how many state-owned enterprises there actually were, somewhere between 400 and 500. And then you're saying there are some that have to remain with government, and I'm looking at having grown up in the UK 35 years ago, when gas was privatized, the airport was sold off, BT was, was already listed, British Petroleum came to the market, water and electricity were sold as regional water companies and electricity companies. Help me to understand which ones must remain in government, because I really believe that even a government hospital is better run under private management. You can still provide the free service, You'll provide it more efficiently, you'll provide it in a measurable manner, and you'll have a more satisfied customer. So I, I think the, I, I'll rephrase it this way. Uh, I think you need to retain within government only those enterprises which are possibly natural monopolies. Um, either, or there are some concerns around national security. Now, in the Sri Lankan context, I really don't see any where national security is involved or where you have a development need which the private sector for whatever reason doesn't want to get involved in. So those would be, so market failures, national security, and uh, development need where the private sector doesn't want to get involved in, can't regulate, and so on and so forth. So that's the, that's the theory part of it, right? Now, if you take it from the Sri Lankan context, you know, this 400, 500 number is not necessarily commercial SOEs. All kinds of things get, get into that bucket. The commercial SOEs are around 130, right? Uh, now, out of these 130, there are possibly 15 to 20 that need to be liquidated because they, they are non-operational. There are possibly about 20 where you might be able to justify retention in government under certain circumstances. So the rest can actually get out into private hands. This, again, is the theory part of it, right? But you know, at the end of the day, it's a political decision as well. Cabinet needs to approve entity A, B, or C to be divested. So what that political decision is, I'm, re you know, I'm not sure, but what we can do is to recommend and say these entities are going to do much better uh, from an entity perspective and in terms of serving the, the citizens much better in private hands. And like I told you, there are about 80 uh, where it's far more appropriate to put these entities into private hands than retain within government. On that, we are very clear. Uh, the, the 20 or so that may need to retain within government, uh, again, you know, it's, it's up for debate. And also, there are ways in which it can be done. I mean, government might own the, as uh, might own the, uh, uh, the asset, the investment, whatever you want to call it but it may be run in the form of a PPP, for instance. So there are mechanisms that you can use to make them more efficient and more effective. 